I do. I feel honored to be here and get to preach this revival. And I told Wyatt, you all are glutton for punishment. You've already had us here a few times, and you've had us back now, and you got four nights in a row. So that's that's on you all. You invited us, okay? Just, just remember that. But uh, 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse number 3. We're just going to read a couple verses. We might shoot back over here in a little bit and, uh, and, and see a little bit more. <clears throat> but 2 Kings chapter number 7, in verse number 3, it says, And there were four leprous men, also said, that entering in at the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, and the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. <clears throat> now therefore come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. That's all I'm going to read for the moment. <clears throat> if the Lord will help us for a moment tonight, uh, I'll try not to keep you too long. I know McDonald's is calling our name, so we'll do our very best. But if the Lord will help us for a few minutes, I'd like to preach on I'm getting up. I'm getting up. You know, pray for us, if you will. God, we ask you to bless and move in this. Lord, we ask for your precious anointing, because without it, it's just broken remarks. Lord, I ask that you move in a mighty way, and we'll give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I, I, I have a very active imagination sometimes, okay? And I think about this story right here, you know. I was telling the kids in Sunday school this morning, I said, there are, there are parables in the Bible Parables are just stories, okay? Parables break things down so people like me can understand it. That's what parables are for. Parables are so the the, the, the prodigal son is not a story that happened in the Bible. It's a product. It's a, 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 a yeah a parable. Thank you. It's a parable that Jesus had to use to break it down so people like me could understand what the kingdom of God was like and what God was truly like. But then there are stories in the Bible that actually happen, factual history that happened. And this right here is not a parable. This right here is a factual, actual thing that happened, okay? So what we see here is these lepers. Now, it might not have been a hill up in front of the gate, but that's what I think of. I think of a hill sitting, sitting right there in front of that gate and those lepers four, four deep sitting there next to each other, and as they look down, they're, they're seeing this city. They're thinking of the opportunities that lie in this city. But see, they've got a few things against them. For one, they're not welcome in the city. For one thing, they're not supposed to be around other people. They've been cast out because they've got leprosy. They're not supposed to be around others because they're so highly contagious. So I think of the time that they could be sitting there, and they could be looking at each other, and, and, and maybe one of them's name was Job. I don't know what their names were. Don't tell us. That's four leprous men. But maybe, maybe Bill looked over at Job and said, Job, you're not looking too hot today. Maybe, maybe things ain't going too well for you today. He, your, your fingers are falling off, Job. You've got some problems going on here. And he said, you know what? You're right. You know, I, I'm really going through it right now. All this while, we know that there's a famine going on and and the, the, the series that went in and they've stolen everything they had. Right. So they're sitting on the side of this hillside. Oh, and, and Nick's paraphrase. Well, I'm not adding to the Bible. I'm just trying to paraphrase it a little bit so, so I can understand it with you, okay? So if you imagine them sitting on the side of this hill and they finally agreed together, the four of them, they said, why sit we here until we die? And they decided, you know what? Where we're at is not good enough. They said... We may go down there. <clears throat> you know, they might just kill us. Man, what a risk they're going to take. So they might just kill us just for going in there. We're not supposed to be there. But we know we're not supposed to be there. They may just kill us for going in there. You know what? We might get down there and there may be a famine there too. And we may die there just like we would here. But you know what? I've decided this place that I'm at is no benefit for me. Where I'm at is getting me nowhere. Where I'm at is just sitting in my misery. Where I'm at is, 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 is just understanding that my digits are falling off. All, all, I'm, all I'm noticing right now is I've got sores all over me. All 
all I know right now is where I'm at is no use to me. So they said, why are we just going to sit here until we die? They said, I am done sitting here. I am getting up. I am getting up. I'm going to go ahead and move on. Yes, I understand that there's some, some things that could await me there, but, but I'm going to take that chance. I am getting up. And I got to thinking about it takes a lot sometimes to get the strength to get up. Sometimes it takes a lot to, to muster that up. I, I remember one time when I was real little, one of the jokes I probably even told one of the boys is there was a, a comedian. He said, you know how you know you're getting old? You know, we're like, how's that? He said, well, he said, when it takes you more than two tries to get up off the couch. <laughs> he said, that's when you know that you're getting old. And, and I got to thinking, sometimes it takes strength to get up. And that, that little, you know, all, all jokes there. But, uh, but in a serious note, we have a lot holding us down. We've got a lot keeping us from taking that leap, taking that step. And moving forward, I believe it was here I preached on being in a comfort zone. Yep. Being in a place where you wasn't willing to step out of where you were at. We had a preacher come by our church one time. And I, I used to sit right about where Wyatt's at on the front. And, uh, and and we was sitting there and he told us, he said, you know what? Let's move things around. And I might have even had you all move around. I don't remember. But he said, the thing is, is sometimes you got to surprise the devil. Right. Now I'm going to break it to you. When I come in here tonight, y'all are in your normal seats. <laughs> guilty. Guilty. Guess what? That's where I was at last time, too. So I'm guilty, too. It's right where I was at. There, there are so many times that it's hard for us to muster up that strength, that courage that it takes to get up. Sometimes it is stress that's got us locked down. Yeah. I know I had something going on the other day, and, and she called me, and I was kind of short with her. I didn't try to be. I wasn't trying to be me. But I told her, I said, i got to go. I am about stressed to my max right now. I had a lot going on. My brain was going every which way. And I told her, I said, I am just about stressed. You know, there are times that stress can keep you tied down or you can't get up. It will leave you in a place. Those lepers do that if they stayed there where they were at. You know what? All that was going to happen is they were going to die. They were going to die. In the place they were in. I don't want to die in the place that I'm in. I want to get up. I want to decide, you know what? Even though I don't know what waits over yonder. Even though I don't know what's ahead. I know I might face some trials. I know I might face some troubles. I know some things that doesn't work out for me might come my way. We was teaching this morning on Job. I told him, I said, boys. And there was a girl in there too. So I, I told him, I said, listen. I said, what, what you can take out of the first chapter of Job is sometimes bad things happen to good people. I said, so Job was a perfect and upright man in God's eyes. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Job didn't ask for that, but Job had to go through it. I said, but if you read that last verse of chapter number one, it says that Job never charged God foolishly. Job, Job never went against God. I said, there's times that we got to go through stuff. But I tell you, Job had to just sit there and said, man, I lost all my animals. I lost most of my servants. I've lost my children. I've got nothing. And then just gave up. He would have died where he was at. But instead, it says he got down on his knees and prayed and called out to God. He said, I'm not staying here. I'm going to get up. I'm going to deal with the consequences of things that's come my way. Stress can keep you tied down. It can keep you in a place where you can't move. Responsibilities can keep you tied down and in a place where you can't move. Now, I know I'm hitting home here because Wyatt was talking about it. I was working swing shift. <coughs> every, every third Sunday, I would be off. But the other two, I was either working 16 hours or I was on a quick comeback from a 16-hour shift. And I was so wiped out, I was like, I just got to sleep. You get to a point where you can only do that so many weekends in a row. And then you're just you're, you're shutting down. But I had that responsibility that I had to provide for my family. I had that responsibility that I was the one making money for my family so we could eat. So we could, could drive our cars and, and all of these things. I had that responsibility. And that responsibility was keeping me out of church. We've got family right now that, that for a little bit, the husband was missing a Sunday night here, 
missing a, a, another service night here, and, and <clears throat> well, where's so-and-so at? Well, he's got to work, and he's just wore out. And I said, I've been there. I've been there where you're wore out. I've been there where it's hard. No, brother. I said, but I'll tell you right now, what he's got to do is he's got to push on through that. Because the devil will try to use your responsibilities. I'm telling you this from experience. I'm not just preaching hard on you. I'm telling you, I have been through this. That the devil will use your responsibilities, the things that you have to do. The devil will use those to keep you out of church. Amen. Because you have that obligation. You're like, wait a minute. The Bible tells a man that it is his responsibility to provide for his family. That's the man's responsibility. So, uh, wait a minute. Now, I have to work. I have to provide. The devil says, don't worry about church. Listen to this. Now, has anybody ever said it? I've said it. God understands. Come on, bro. God understands why you're not there. God understands. Now, listen. I know God understands, but there's also a point where it's like, you know what? Yes, it would be easier to lay down and go to bed. Yeah, it sure would. But if I go ahead and get up, if I go ahead and decide that I'm not going to stay in this situation, you know, we believe it. Now, looking at me, you may not know. Okay, I used to go to the gym almost five days a week. I told you, see, whenever I said that, you guys were like, yep, you're right. You're right. But looking at you, I wouldn't know. But there was a time where I would go to the gym almost five days a week, every week. That first little bit was hard to get started. You know what? It was hard to start walking on that treadmill. Seven minutes on the elliptical, I thought I would die. It was killing me. I didn't think I could make it. My heart rate was running faster than a cheetah. I couldn't do it. I was a mess. I'm telling you, I was a mess. But once I started going, it got easier. Once I started going, I got a desire to go. I almost got from my heart said, get me back up there, buddy. Let's go. Yeah, because I got that, that drive. Well, you know what's just as easy whenever COVID happened, that big nasty C word? When COVID happened and they closed the gym down, and no, I didn't have the drive to go out and run in the neighborhood. So I just quit going. Yep. I still ain't got back in, as you can tell. I still haven't got that, that drive that want to. But, but there, it, it's easy whenever the devil will try to use your responsibilities and say, you have to do this. And God understands. It'll be okay. He, he loves that phrase, God understands. Yep. God, God gets it. You had to work. That's easy. That's because he wants your responsibilities to keep you tied down. Because just like me going to the gym, if you get to a point where you're not going to church on a regular basis, guess what? It'll be easier to stay at home. That's a fact. I've lived it. I've lived it not just with the gym. I've lived it with church. I've seen it where I had to miss two services. I had to miss three services. Well, now if I go, they're going to ask me where I've been. Am I okay? What all's going on? And I don't want to have to answer those questions. My responsibilities have kept me tied down. My excuses can get me tied down. My excuses can have me in a place that I'll stay there until I die. So I have decided for myself, just like the lepers, I can't let those things keep me down. Amen. I can't let those things win. I have to get up. I was thinking about the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible tells us that for 12 years, she had went to every physician she could. For 12 years, she spent her life savings, everything she had trying to get fixed. You know, there's times that doctors will tell you there's nothing we can do. But guess what? That bill is still going to come in the mail. That doctor will tell you, I'm sorry, you're terminal. I'm sorry that mass is too big. I'm sorry this disease is going to kill you. But guess what? In a couple of weeks, you'll see the bill for this visit. It doesn't matter. You're still going to get the check, ain't you? You're still going to have to pay them. But that woman with the issue of blood, it would have been easy for her to just roll over and say, you know what? I've done my due diligence. Paid everything I've got. I'm just going to abide until I die. I'm just going to go into it. It is what it is, right? That's a, everybody's favorite saying, it is what it is. I'm just going to have to deal with it. No, she heard Jesus was coming Come on, by. Praise God. She heard Jesus was coming by. You know what she did? She said, I'm not going to just sit here till I die, just like the leper. She said, I've got to get up and go to Jesus. I've got to get to the one that can really do something yes. about it. His, his uh, reputation preceded him. 
And whenever they heard he was coming, she said, I've got to get to Jesus. And you know what's so wonderful about that? When she was on her way to Jesus, if you start reading in that, you find out Jairus was right there too. There were so many that heard that Jesus was coming through that he was, they was trying to get hold of him. She could have said, I'm just going to stay right here. But she said, instead, I'm going to get up and go to Jesus. And you know, you think about that just like the lepers. She had an issue of blood. She was unclean. I believe if, if she was walking through there and somebody saw her, they might have started shouting, unclean, unclean. We don't want your kind. You're unclean. On, brother. We don't want you here. You're unclean. So once again, Nick's imagination, I wonder if she had to crawl. I wonder if she had to try to keep out of sight to get through there, to get to Jesus. But she finally made her way because she decided that she was going to get up. <coughs> If you look down here right in 2 Kings 7, in verse number 6 through 8, it says that the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses. So whenever those, whenever those lepers got up and started their way into the, the city there, into the camp, the Lord didn't just let them go in and the Syrians run off. No, He made four men sound like an army. They thought they were coming in from both sides. They said, surely all these armies have come together to come and defeat us. So they dropped everything they had and they took off and got out of there. Look what happened whenever they decided to get up. They, they spent the day. They spent the day in the spoils. They spent the day like, oh, man, we haven't got to eat like this in a while. Man, coming up, we're coming up on Thanksgiving, folks. There's going to be something that you only get to eat that way one time a year. Whenever you get all those different foods, all those good things, I'm getting some amens out of that one. Hey? But Thanksgiving's coming. And you'll be like, man, I only get to eat like this once a year. So and so only makes this for me at Thanksgiving. You know, looking forward to it. I wonder if they were sitting there and it's, man, Joe. You might be missing that finger, but this food sure is good, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, man, the silver and the gold, all these spoils that, that we get to keep because of coming on down here. Just imagine if we had a stayed outside that gate. Come on. We would have never got this. But then their conviction kicked in. It was coming up on nighttime, and they said, oh, but bad things are going to happen to us if we just keep this a secret. Come on. Bad things are going to happen to us if we don't go tell the king about this. So then they went ahead and left, and they went and told the king, said, you're not going to believe it. They left everything. They left everything. You know what? They thought it was a trap. They thought it was a trap. They thought that, that the Syrians had just went off and was waiting for them to come in there, thinking that was all their spoils, so they could sneak back in on them. And whenever they finally realized what, what was waiting on them inside of that camp. I got to thinking, my Lord, what's waiting for us if we're willing to just get up? If we're willing to say, I'm not just going to sit here and die. I want to get up and see what God's got for me because not only was He able to bless them, but He was able to bless all of them. He was able to bless all of them. They didn't know what was going to be in there. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow's not even promised. Tomorrow's not even promised. And I'll tell you, there's times, you know, we've got a big maintenance outage coming up in October. And every day that they start talking about it, I just dread it. I'm like, man, I know what's coming. This is not going to be fun. I'm actually going to have to work. This is not okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have to turn wrenches and run impacts and move valves. And this, is, this is not going to be a good time. And I'm dreading it. You know, I know what's coming. But there are so many times that we won't do anything simply because we don't like the uncertain. That's why we don't like the dark. You know, we're supposed to be, it's okay for me to not like the dark because I'm supposed to be a children of the light. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't have to like the dark because I'm supposed to be a child of the light. Yeah, so so I, you know, keep that darkness to yourself. I don't want it. But, uh, but, but there are so many things we don't, we don't want to do because we are uncertain of the outcome. My wife has got OCD. I upset, yeah, OCD. And she likes things in order. She likes things to be the way they are supposed to be. I don't know, you ain't, no, ain't no husband's got to point out any wives or anything like that, but I'll point mine out and say she likes things to be a specific way. And I'm one of those that I, 
Yeah, I like it to be somewhat organized. You know what I mean? Like you walk in the bar right it. now, you may be disappointed in it because it's not perfectly clean. But she likes saying everything's got its home and it should be in its home, right? I don't like things changing. I don't like variables. That's my problem. Is, is she told me the other day, well, plans have changed. I know you don't like that because I don't. I don't like it when things have changed because I don't like uncertainty. I don't like things uh, not being what I'm expecting. And that's why sometimes we'll sit outside the gate, not willing to get up, not willing to move, simply because we don't know what's waiting on the other side. What I felt like the Lord had put on my heart tonight is we need to get up. Amen. It is time to stop sitting there just talking about what could be and instead saying, Lord, I'm going to trust in you and I'm going to get up. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. If there's a time for everything, I feel like right now is the time to say, I am getting up. Why sit here until we die? I am getting up. This is not where I want to die. Say it with me. The position I'm in, this is not where I want to die. I am not satisfied with where I'm at. I don't want to sit still. I want to keep on going to attain what God's got prepared for me. I don't want to be happy just, just uh, treading ground or treading water. I want to keep moving. I want to get up. And I need the Lord's help to do it. Because this guy in front of you does not have the power to do it on his own. I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of things that I look back at and I say, God, there's no way I could have done it without you. Romans 13, 11 says, In that, knowing the time, that now is a high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our yes, salvation yes. nearer than when we believe. What he's saying is, we are closer now than we have ever been. And now is not a time to just sit there idle and say, I'm just going to deal with whatever comes my way and I'll stay right here. No, now is the time to get up. You know, I had somebody that was telling me, we was talking, I don't, and I'm not preaching politics and I'm not talking politics with you. But whenever it comes down to it, I told him, I said, we are in very, very uncertain times. I said, I'll leave it with that. I said, if you start reading the back of the book, we know how everything goes down. And we are closer now. It may, it may still not be in my lifetime. But it's still closer now than it has ever been. And I said, we have to be prepared. And he was talking about tribulation and all. And I told him, I said, I'll tell you what, no matter which tribulation you believe in, pre-trip, mid-trip, or post-trip, I said, it doesn't matter. You need to be ready. That's what matters, because if you're not ready and in pre-trip, you done messed up, bud. I said, we better pray that we are ready at all times, because now it is closer than it has ever been. And we'll get ready to start to close. I told you I'd try not to hold you too late if Candace Gray get us a song. <coughs> I'd like for us to start this revival off yes. with our minds made up. I would like to start this revival off. Now, you guys want to know a secret? I might have told Brother Maggard, I don't know if I did or not. This is my first revival I've ever preached. Yeah, I've preached a whole weekend before. I've, I've popped into a church on, I think, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I've preached four nights in a row before. But like I said, you all are the ones glutton for punishment. You got me four nights in a row. But, uh, but I, I would like for us to start this revival off on the note of saying, I am not just going to sit here. And I tell you, I'm going to do my best to not just stand up here. Whenever I'm, I, I, she'll tell you, I'm a nervous wreck. Here's times my hands are shaking, brother, Hello, brother. Because I get a message together, and I'm like, I feel like this is what God gave me for tonight. But the devil will tell me, you're crazy, bud. This isn't what you're supposed to preach tonight. On, but on, I feel like this is what God had given me for tonight, is that we need to start this revival off saying, I'm not just going to stay here. I want to move forward. And your pastor said it earlier, whenever he told you, don't, don't come in here expecting the Asbill family to bring revival. We can't bring you revival. He had to hit the nail on the head. I cannot bring you revival. What I can do is try to bring you a message and expect you to do your part that whenever God touches your heart and says, listen, it's time to stop just sitting outside of the gate. It's time to get up and go see what I've got for you. I just ask you to be willing. 
to get up and do that. Praise to get God. up and listen to the Spirit of the Lord. That's what I would like for us to see. You see what happened when they decided that they was going to get up? God was able to bless. You may just be surprised if you're willing to get up for what God will do for you. You may just be surprised. So as we're getting ready coming to the altar, I want to challenge you tonight to decide you're not going to sit there until you die. You're not just going to sit there and let the services go by. You know, revival is not just a series of meetings. You know, we, we, it's easy to say, well, I'm in revival. Some people's like, what in the world does that mean? Well, that means we got to go to church four nights, five nights, six nights. And they're like, my goodness. Yeah, well, that's not what revival's about. Do you know you can have revival in one service? Do you know you can have revival in one service whenever you actually let God work on you and revive you and bring you back where you need to be and re renew that hunger? You know, you think about somebody out most in the desert. They get weak, they get tired, they get broken. But whenever they get some water and a little food in their belly, guess what? They get revived and they get that drive and that hunger to go on. And that's what I'd like to see us get tonight. So I challenge you to decide that you're not sitting where you are, that you're willing to get up. This can be more than a series of meetings, but it's going to take more than my participation. I know your pastor was telling me, he said, I've been having them pray fast. I appreciate that. We have to do have that. We have to have that to get anywhere. But tonight, as we come into the altars, let's tell the devil, I'm getting up. You're not going to talk me into staying where I'm at. I'm getting up because I want something out of this revival. I want revival. Let's come in and pray.